Hello and welcome to In The Loop Wollongong. I'm Nathan. And I'm Natasha and we've got an excellent show for you this it's month. It's true, it's true. <laughs> Make sure you stay in the loop by subscribing on the YouTube and don't forget, if you want to know what is coming up each month before everyone else, follow us on the Facebook, the Twitter and the Gram. The Gram, Nathan? Really? Yeah, that's what the cool kids are calling it. Now let's <laughs> In The Loop and chill. Oh, come on Nathan, too far, too far. Calm down a little bit. <laughs> Coming up later, Hannah and Avi are headed to Trees Adventure in Nowra. Lockie from My 98 FM is out and about in the city hunting down the best dessert spots in town. The Illawarra Mercury's Greg Ellis sits down with Donna and Alan Shingler to chat about their careers as professional ballroom dancers. Bright Mind Professor Lorna Moxham is here to talk to us about the global challenges of mental health and our ageing population. We sit down with Microsoft CEO Alan Robinson to find out how they mix creativity and innovation into their IT solutions. But first up, i98FM's Ryan Cram heads to Kivoro to enjoy a meal with new owners Simon Evans and Tom Cumento. Hi, it's Crammy, and I'm here at Kavo, which has been an absolute staple of the Wollongong food scene since it opened back in 2004, and has actually been hatted every single year since. Now, Kavo has recently come under new management, so I decided it was time to sit down and have a meal with the owners, Simon Evans and Tom Cimento, to have a talk about what's new here at Kavo. Uh, so over here we have uh, yabby cooked over charcoals with butter lettuce, chestnuts, and finger lime. And over there we have a dry aged nanny guy with pickled and fermented vegetables, horseradish and broth. Now for those that maybe haven't been to Kavo before, if you had to describe the style of cuisine they would find here, what would it be? Um, so we definitely this year moved even more towards a sort of modern Australian style, so we're using a lot of local produce, so we're very much basing all dishes around the ingredients. What, what can we get, what's in season, what's around Wollongong local area, and then we sort of build a dish from there. Um, it's always based on, on quite, quite local stuff. Yeah, now you guys do a degustation style of eating here at Kavo, which is multiple courses which you can match with wines. And that menu I've noticed changes quite a lot, or regularly as well. So how, what, what dictates the change to the menu? Um, I mean, we, we try, and, try and change it roughly sort of six to eight weeks, mm -hmm. and try and keep within that barrier. Um, after, after about six to eight weeks, you're a little bit bored of the menu, cooking it every day. Mm -hmm. So then you're kind of ready for a change. Like when you first do a dish, you're really excited about it. You're like, oh, it's so good. And then by eight weeks, you're just like, it's like your favourite song. You yeah, know a song. Exactly. You love it. You yeah, love yeah, it for yeah. the first week, yeah. two weeks you love it. You're still loving it. Yeah, full on the radio, play it too much, and yeah. then it gets, <laughs> okay. it gets annoying. Then. So, this is the second course. Um, it's torched veal with tuna floss, uh, pear and celery remoulade, cured egg yolks, um, parmesan, and beef tendons. Let's how, about, how about you get a whole one to yourself? Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll share. share. <laughs> you also match wines here, here at Kavo as well with yeah. your degustation. Food and wine intrinsically goes well together. Mm -hmm. um, and when, when you get wines that are matched with a specific course, that wine is there to, to sort of season the food, to make, to make it better, okay. to lift it, to go with it. So a lot of time you can even have a wine that on its own you don't like, but when you eat it with food, suddenly that wine's got a completely different mouthfeel and just kind of tastes amazing with the food. And also cocktails, you've recently changed your cocktail menu as well. Yeah, that? so um, see the whole restaurant, big focus on Australian and then and local as possible. So we're sort of looking at the cocktail list at the start of the year. And it was a lot of things I, I could sort of find replacements for the Australian. So Campari mm -hmm. is a great, um, great sort of replacement for that. Adelaide Hills. Um, there's some great gins, great whiskies, great, great vodkas in Australia now. So it was, we were looking at it and we sort of felt we could probably put together a cocktail list with all Australian spirits, bitters, mixers, mm -hmm. see all the fruit we use and stuff like that is all local as well. So we managed to make a pretty classic cocktail list using everything Australian. And you mentioned vegan and vegetarian, like if people come here on a regular night, those options are always available. Always, well. yeah. yeah. We definitely um, have a thing where we kind of have it, if ever, everyone pays the same amount when they come here, therefore everyone should be treated equally. Mm -hmm. And I kind of hate the idea of certain people that, that have dietary requirements don't get as much attention. Mm -hmm. We kind of try to give everyone as much attention as possible, mm -hmm. no matter who they are or who, what, you know, what decision they make, what food they want to eat or can't eat. Mm -hmm. um, therefore we put as much effort into our vegetarian menus as we do our regular menus uh, and try to make them as interesting as we can. The three of the desserts we have at the moment. Um, so this one is actually a sweet corn uh, ice cream mm -hmm. uh, with micro coriander, frozen brown butter, and uh, underneath is a uh, grain called Job's Tears, which we've puffed yeah. up like popcorn. 
Um, it's like a Mexican street food dessert. Yeah, a little yeah. bit, yeah, that was yeah. kind of the idea behind it. Over here we have uh, local milk and honey. Uh, so it's honey from our beehives, harvested mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago actually. Um, and milk from South Coast Dairy, Den and Berry. Uh, and then here we have uh, cheesecake mousse uh, with beetroot, Illawarra plum sorbet in the middle, um, and frozen yogurt. Wow, this corn ice cream? Yeah. Pretty good, eh? Really amazing. And then the menus here, obviously, since you guys have had, well, since the restaurant's been open in 2004, has seen it get a hat. Do you feel a lot of pressure to maintain nah, that hat? Nah, no, no, none. You just do what you do in the kitchen and just, just hope the results, or was that some sarcasm? <laughs> that was massively sarcastic. <laughs> but you can't cook for it. You can't kind of set out to try and get a hat. You've got mm -hmm. to just do what you do and, and hope things come. Yeah, so you, you try not to kind of let it consume you every day, but it's in the back of your head. It's, it's a massive accolade for chefs, obviously with the history of Cabot as well. We obviously want to keep that tradition going and then keep, keep the runner hats going. So we're, we're sort of quietly confident, but there's a tiny little bit of your brain which is screaming a little bit louder than the confident part sometimes. Oh, this is awesome as well. That's really cold. <laughs> the cold <laughs> headache, because I mean... <laughs> yeah, my brain bruised. Now you guys are both pretty young, as we mentioned before, and you've taken on the, uh, the, the responsibility of running Kavo here. Why Wollongong to take on this sort of food dream and, and at this level? Well, I think I think Wollongong has kind of, in the last five to ten years, gone through a bit of a change in terms of food trends, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, no longer that steel making town or that you know, it is a university town now, I guess, but. It's ready for that next step as a, as a food destination or as, as a travel destination. Definitely trying to push Wollongong as a whole as well because there's some great stuff to do here. Amazing beaches, amazing scenery. There's you know, some great restaurants and bars popping up now. So as much as we want to push ourselves as Caveau, we want to push Wollongong as a whole mm -hmm. and sort of show what the region can produce. Well, you guys are doing an outstanding job. All the food we've tried today was delicious. This again has been just texturally amazing. Yeah. Combination of flavours are great. You really obviously know what you're doing. And thanks so much for having us here. And i will more than happily finish this off. So come on down and try Cavo, it's absolutely delicious. Don't be intimidated, it's, it's amazing. The food's incredible, definitely worth the hat. I reckon maybe a second hat, to be honest. So thanks a lot, guys. Yum, didn't that look amazing? Yeah, I'm so jealous. Mm -hmm. Cavo are giving away dinner for two with wine pairing, valued at $320. That's awesome. <laughs> to win, share the episode and segment and let us know in the comments who you'll be treating to dinner at Cavo. Me? Yeah, Picking. please take her. She needs a night out. Yeah, desperate. <laughs> and now Hannah and Abby are set to take on an obstacle course in the trees with Trees Adventure in Nara. This segment is brought to you by Destination Wollongong and Internetrix. Hey, look who's back. It's Abby and we're here at Trees Adventure in Nara to take on some obstacle courses. The only question is, who's going to go first? Me. Okay. Trees Adventure have six courses to suit all ages and abilities. First up, Abby's having a go at one of the easier kids' courses. Okay, that looks so fun. I think I'm gonna have to go and have a go at one of the advanced courses. Keep going. 
Ay. Well, that was awesome. Abby, what did you think? Scary but fun. Yeah, and what was your favourite part? Zipline. I want to go again. Okay, if you want more information, head to treesadventure.com.au. <laughs> Ooh, that looked like fun. Are you scared of heights? No, I'm not scared of heights. I am terrified of trees, though. Of course you are. <laughs> trees Adventure are giving away a $160 family pass to win. All you have to do is share the episode or segment and let us know in the comments why your family wants to swing through the trees like Tarzan. Or Jane. She also liked to swing. I'm just going to ignore that. <laughs> Next, Lockie from i98FM heads into the city to check out the best desserts the gong has to offer. This segment is made possible by Wollongong Central. Discover the city. Hey, how are you? Lockie here from i98FM and I am so excited. This is a dessert dream. I'm about to go on a tour of the very best, the most scrumptious, delicious and delightful desserts that you're going to find anywhere in Wollongong. And I had an English teacher when I was about nine years old who said to me, the difference between dessert and desert is dessert has two S's because you always have two helpings. So let's hope that mantra is still alive today. Let's go. We've made our way downstairs to the corner of Kira and Crown to the world famous Max Brenner restaurant. I'm joined by Bo, who is our chocolate superstar here at Max Brenner. Bo, thanks very much for joining us. Talk me through some of these amazing treats because I know rather than just chocolate, a lot of them are quite unique to Max Brenner. So it looks like something out of the 1970s. What's this chocolate fondue? So the fondue is probably our number one product here we have at Max Brenner. Um, I'm you get grab one. two yeah. towers. You've got your milk chocolate and your dark chocolate here. Um, it does come with a lot of sides. So you've got your strawberries, you've got your banana. So this is the healthy option? This is the healthy side, okay. yes. And, and then we, you've got, we just dip it in? Dip it in. Oh, look at that. So you can have as much chocolate as you like. You can double dip. Um, it comes with, yeah, the strawberries, the banana, the banana bread and the marshmallows. Yeah. And you can mm. dip it in the milk or the dark chocolate. Now onto this, there's a bit of a story behind this, I believe. Was this the very first one Max Brenner That did? is the very first ever Max Brenner product. So basically it's a do-it-yourself hot chocolate. So I just simply get some of the white chocolate we've got and yeah, we what, you you just, put it in? Yeah, that's right. In okay. as much as you want. Um, and it, you just stir it in with the straw and it should melt down. Oh, look at that. It's like magic. So I'm going to go for it here, mate. Mmm. That's so good. Lastly, this is uh, the Aussie invention, this cappuccino. It's our kangaroo cup. So it's, uh, it's been designed to really show the relationship between our coffee and between chocolate and really bring them together. Mm. So the design was actually done by the wife of the owner of the company, Iris. Yeah. And it involves a pouch in which we place the chocolate. So the chocolate will heat up, melt into your coffee. You know, when I come to Max Brenner, I order these. And the funny thing is, I always thought cappuccinos were like what my grandmother used to have at the RSL but you guys have made them cool again with this little uh, kangaroo pouch. Yeah. Mmm. Bo, thank you very much for running no through problem. everything here, and you can find out more about this and everything else here at Max Printer. So we're downstairs now at Lower Ground here at Wollongong Central. Now this is a place you probably know as the brownie place in Wollongong. Chantel's gonna tell us more about it. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you're known here as the brownie expert here at Banos Brownies. So talk me through these array of brownies. How many flavours do you have here at brownies? We have over 30 brownies in different varieties, different flavours. These are probably our most popular ones. We have the raspberry cheesecake and Yum. the salted caramel. They're very popular. It, it, it does look great. You can see you've got these beautiful pink layers. You've got the chocolate in. I'm just going to go straight for it. Oh. Wow, that is rich. There's a great aftertaste. That's delicious. Yep. What are some of the other flame, flavors you can find here at Banos Brownies? We've got Nutella, peanut yep. butter, peanut M&M, coconut. There's such a variety. Everything. You've got yep. the whole thing. Now talk me through, what's this one here we've got? This looks great. That's our jar combo. So currently we have the rose gelato topped with peanut butter brownies. And I'm loving this mango. I believe you make this in store. You make the gelato? Yeah, we make the gelato here nice and fresh. Chantel, thank you so much for joining us. Get yourself down here to the brownie place in Wollongong, Banos Brownies, lower ground here at Wollongong Central. 
So we've made our way down Globe Lane and we've found ourselves at Kurtosh, which is a favourite of mine for this coffee. I'm joined by Michael. Good to see you again, mate. Good to see you too, mate. But the one thing that people come to Kurtosh for are these amazing desserts. Now, before we get to them, it's not like most places where you buy by the slice here, it's, it's the weight, isn't it? Yeah, so we will cut it to quite literally whatever size the customer desires. No minimum size, no maximum size. So I want for a slice as big as this plate, you'll do it for me, is that Definitely, right? 100%. So we've got the biscuits as well. Uh, this is what, a tiramisu? Yep, a tiramisu. It's an alcohol-free tiramisu, so That's it's safe for the kids as well. No, I love this, I love tiramisu. But this is the one I'm waiting for, because I love anything passion fruit. It's what, passion fruit, walnut? Passion fruit, walnut and honey mousse. Yum. And there's an array. How many different styles of cakes do you have here? We've got about 25 different cakes almost all of the time, and we do actually chop and change our cakes occasionally too. So sometimes cakes will go, sometimes mm -hmm. new cakes will come. It's it always keeps it nice and interesting. That's got a great aftertaste, I know. So I'm not being rude. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm no. enjoying these cakes. <laughs> and, and the cool thing is when you come in, You've actually got the, the kirtosh, mm -hmm. which I believe is, is this from Turkey? Where's it originally It's from? Hungarian. Hungarian, I'm sorry. So it's called a kirtosh kalak. What a masterpiece. So you actually, what, wrap the pastry around like a rolling pin? And yep. then put so, it in the oven? Yep, we sure do. So it's a long ribbon of dough and we do wrap it around the rolling pin. Love and it. then we bake it. And one of the great things is, it's so easy when you're in a group to just take a bit and just grab it off. Oh, it's warm too. <laughs> They're fantastic to share. Mm. So we've got a kirtosh, we've got cakes, we've got coffee. This is just, what more do you want? I'm talking with my mouth full, I love it so much. Mum's gonna hate me. This is a place you're gonna find something for everyone. It's fantastic. Oh, so good. So we've made it to our very last destination. What a place to finish up here with our dessert tour of Wollongong Central. And we're here at San Churo, which is popular and loved by so many people here with our wonderful host, Amy. Congratulations. I should say congratulations, first of all, because she won Employee of the Month across Australia. So... Thank you very much. We're only it's... dealing with the best here. And look at this array of amazing food that's unique here to San Churo. Yes. Talk us through this platter. What's this one called? Okay, so this is my favourite platter. And this is the, cho this is the chocolate tapas. So you have your chocolate covered stra strawberries. Now they're fresh, you get those from the markets? We get them from straight from Sydney in the morning. And then you've got your brownies, you've got your chocolate, which is all real chocolate, mm -hmm. melted from the milk buds. You've got your ice cream, your churros, truffles. Amy, yeah. talk me through, how do you guys make your world famous churros? Well, lucky, we, um, we hand make our dough. So our machines mm -hmm. are from Spain. And we have flour, we have oil and boiling water Come and on, salt. Wow. So they great. they are 30 centimetres long. Okay, so you cover them in what, like a cinnamon sugar sort of thing? You can ha either have cinnamon or icing. Mm. So it depends what type of, what, what floats your boat. I also think that one of the best things about coming to San Churros is your sundaes. Now, there's yeah. no one that doesn't love an ice cream in a cone or what kind of sundaes. How do you make the sundaes? What's the deal? This is amazing, Lockie, right? Because we've got premium ones. So we have chocolate brownie, we have cookies and cream. Yum. We have double chocolate mint and we get to change them up all the time. And then we have the Sunday My Way, and I think that is one of the best things in the Illawarra in terms of desserts. There is nowhere else you can go and get a Sunday and create your own. It's like ice magic on here. Oh my God, this is incredible. Mm. So we've come to an end of this dream afternoon visiting so many great desserts here in Wollongong Central. It's unbelievable how much good stuff there is in Wollongong to eat. As a snack, after a dinner, after a movie, but we're thinking, is there somewhere that we've missed out? Is there somewhere that you think we should include next time? Let us know in the comments below because surely there's a couple of great places that we need to add to our list for next time. In the meantime, I'm gonna try and see if there's any more of that Sunday left. Guys, is that Sunday all gone? Is it all gone? It's all gone. Aw, couldn't you leave me some? That looked so delicious. Um, excuse me, why don't we get to do food stories anymore? Well, you guys can win a full pack of delicious, delectable delights. And all you have to do is share the episode or segment and let us know in the comments below what your favourite dessert is. And now for people of Wollongong, this month the Illawarra Mercury's Greg Ellis sits down with world-renowned former professional ballroom dancers, Donna and Alan Shingler. Shall we? Yes. <laughs> okay, so. Um, but who's um, leading? This segment is brought to you by Access Law Group and the Illawarra Mercury. Hi, Greg Ellis from the Illawarra Mercury and today on the People of Wollongong we're talking to former world dance champions Alan and Donna Shingler. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks Greg. Thank you. 
First of all, Donna, your family is uh, very well known in the Illawarra. Your parents uh, have uh, taught dance schools here for a long time. Mm. Tell me who they are and, uh, and where you were sure. born. Sure. My parents are Ray and Margaret Reeve. Um, I was born in Bulle, um and I lived in Thoreau for all my, my young life. Um, my parents had a dance school in Thoreau uh, for a number of years and then they moved their studio to Winuna. So all up at least 50, 56 years, the Reva Dance Academy. And Alan, where, where did you grow up? Uh, well, I'm English, so I grew up about 20 kilometres south of Manchester, and my family are not dancers. <laughs> How did you two first meet, and can you recall? Yeah, I remember when we first met. We met at the, the mecca of ballroom dancing, really, which is the British Championships in uh, Blackpool in the UK. And Donna had an Australian partner, I had an English partner. And I looked at her and thought, wow, yeah, she's good. She's really good. And then, of course, later, to further Donna's career, she moved to the UK. I moved to London. Donna moved to London, and we became friends, and then eventually we danced together. Mm. Now, at, I think it was 1998, you were ranked best in the world, and you yeah. won a major international competition. Can you tell me a little bit about your successes? Yeah, we, uh, we won the British Championship, uh, the Open British Championship, which is the biggest thing you can win within the industry. Um, later that year, we won the IMG World Championship, which, uh, for those of you that don't know, IMG was uh, Mark McCormack, who was the sponsors of, uh, or manager of Monica Sellers and Tiger Woods, people like that. That was filmed by ESPN in Boston. And we also won the international championships at the Royal Albert Hall. So of the, of the four or five Grand Slams, we were lucky enough to win three of them. So. And how long had you been dancing together when you won? That oh, time, gosh. seven years? Seven years. Seven years. That time, yeah. But we, we started dancing together in 1992, and um, both of us were in the top 12 in the world with our respective partners, but finding it hard to crack the top six. And um, after, gosh, four months together, we, 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 we made it into the top six, you know, and, um, and basically from then, the rest of our career, we're never out of the top six in the world, as professionals as well. So we we're very lucky. Um, and, uh, you know, the chemistry was right, the body types were right, and both of us had a great work ethic. We worked very well together and, um, yeah, had a fantastic career out of it, and it's given us a fantastic life. Yeah, we were very lucky to travel the world, doing what very we were much. doing, demonstrating and teaching. I'm told you still can't go to Japan without being recognised. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting. We, we were um, in a Japanese movie a few years ago, and, um, you know, that's helped a little bit with that. But yeah, ballroom dancing in Japan is, is, is huge. It's a royal sport and um, yeah, we, we, yeah. <laughs> still known. <laughs> now I'm also told um, you have a big annual dance event you hold here in the Illawarra for the South Coast every year, mm. normally in September. This year it's been moved to October. We're going to talk about that. But um, interestingly, that's been moved this year because Elton John's coming to town. But you've already got a little bit of a connection with Elton John. <laughs> Yeah, we were very lucky, uh, 97th, the memory, the day sticks in my brain, the 11th of April 1997, 50th birthday party of Elton John, which took place at the Hammersmith Palais in London. And we were invited along to, uh, to demonstrate at his party, which was fantastic, great night. Then later the, there was a spin-off from that Burn the Floor, and we did a few things at his home in Windsor. And uh, yeah, so we met him, we met him a couple of times. You run your own dance school now called yes, Dance Space 383. How yes. long have you been, or when did you move back to Australia? We probably should start there. Right. Um, we moved back to Australia for good in 2006. Um, and um, we, we took over my parents' business um, as they were getting older. And, you know, we thought this would be a good thing for us to do for our future. And um, we knew that Wollongong was our home. This is where we wanted to live. Yeah, so we've carried on. We changed the name from the family name because we wanted to encompass all forms of dancing. Um, so we called it Dance Space 383. And um, yeah, it's, 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 a great, it's a great little business and we, we absolutely love, love it. Yeah. yeah. But what sets our studio aside from other Borum studios is the calibre of the students that we have. So at the moment in uh, Wollongong, we have four out of the top six amateur couples in, in Australia. Um, and that's a huge achievement for a regional, a regional area. These kids are very, very talented. And also, a lot of them moved to Wollongong to learn at Dance Space 383. So we're very, very proud of that. Yeah. Um, and uh, tell me about the other rent too, the one that's now moved back to October. That's yes. one you're involved with every year as well. well. My mother has been running um, the South Coast Borum Spectacular for 
uh, I would say, 40 years, maybe more. Um, so I've now taken that over. And um, we have, we've run it at Anita's Theatre in Thoreau. And it's a fantastic space. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, and that's on the 15th of October. And um, last year, it was, it was completely sold out. It was massive. Um, so, yeah, it's it, another great dance event for the Illawarra. And, um, and I like to, you've got the national championships, but I like to look at our event as encompassing a lot of our new dancers into the industry. Because in Dance Sport Australia now, we have recreational. So it's a very cheap way for kids to enter into our sport and they can compete. You know, there's not the demands on costuming and, and the cost. It's, it's cheap to get into. So that's what I would like to focus on at Anita's as well. OK, to finish up on, is there anything you'd like to say to the, anyone who might be interested in getting involved? Or <laughs> Absolutely. Or our, our sport is all-encompassing. Um, all ages, all levels. And I think, uh, yeah, I think people are surprised when they come into Dance Space 383 in Wollongong. It's a beautiful venue. Um, we have a world famous uh, ballroom dancing studio right here in Wollongong. And it's a beautiful venue and it's all encompassing. I think that's what's wonderful about our sport. Give it a go. You know, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do and it's, it's given us a wonderful life. Sure, that's it. Alan and Donna Shingler, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. And now we sit down with Brightline Professor Lorna Moxham to learn about Living Well Longer, a UOW Global Challenges program looking at what's needed to ensure a better quality of life in later years in regard to ageing and mental health. This segment is made possible by University of Wollongong. I'm Lorna Moxham. I've got dual roles at the University of Wollongong, Professor of Mental Health and Nursing. And I also work in the Global Challenges Program. I'm the theme leader of Living Well Longer. The Global Challenges Program at the University of Wollongong is an overarching research program specifically designed to encourage interdisciplinary teams to work on real world problems. It's a fabulous program. There's a number of themes in the Global Challenges Program and the particular theme that I lead is called Living Well Longer. Living Well Longer has two focused areas, um, mental health and ageing population over 55. One of the major projects we have in the ageing focus of, living, of the Living Well Longer theme is Kiama Dementia Friendly City. Dementia is a really big problem. There's going to be a lot of people in the future with dementia. So getting cities and regions to become dementia friendly and thinking about what does a dementia friendly city look like? How do we go about becoming dementia friendly? That's a really important research project. So Global Challenges was instrumental in gaining some funding and gaining Alzheimer's Australia to choose Kiama as a city to investigate how we can turn Kiama into a dementia friendly city. And then we've got a project that is absolutely passionate to my heart which I do lead called the Recovery Camp. And the Recovery Camp is an is a innovation, comes out of the Illawarra where a group of academics from the university but also linked in with the local health district take away 30 people with serious and enduring mental illnesses. And those people have diagnoses like schizophrenia, post-traumatic stress disorder, bipolar, anxiety, depression. We couple them up with 26 students and they're from nursing, psychology, exercise science, dietetics and nutrition. And what we do with that program, we head bush for a week. We get on a bus Monday morning and we camp for a week and we come back on Friday. And what it is, it's an immersive learning experience for the students. They learn things directly from people with lived experience of mental illness. They learn things they can't learn from books. We put the consumers in the driving, driving seat and they really encourage and talk to the students. Global Challenges really enables an interdisciplinary perspective. Universities are really, really good researchers and we have some absolutely fabulous researchers embedded within particular disciplines. The kind of projects that Global Challenges funds and the kind of projects that the University of Wollongong and the federal government and state governments and territory governments are increasingly becoming more aware of and think are important are projects that are interdisciplinary and projects that can translate to real world problems. Life isn't a single discipline. Life isn't a single gender. So having people from numerous disciplines all bringing their expertise and their passion to solve real world problems is probably what gets me out of bed at the moment. 
And for our last story this episode, our innovative business is Microsolve. We sat down with CEO Alan Robinson to talk innovation and how Microsolve have grown over the past 25 years into a national IT service provider. This segment is made possible by Advantage Wollongong, Lancaster Law and Mediation, and Kazen Business and Financial. I'm Alan Robinson, I'm the CEO at Microsoft. Microsoft focuses on two, two main things. One is to provide creative, innovative solutions for our clients to help them with their business opportunities. And the other part of our business is to provide safe, secure computing so that clients can focus on their business and not worry about whether their IT is working or not. Aged care and healthcare are, are our two main uh, industries that we focus on, and that's, that's around Australia. Um, but we also have a range of smaller customers, so we have a small business focus as well for the smaller client that uh, with five or six staff in an office environment, maybe accountants, lawyers, uh, those sort of practice type businesses that really don't need the aggravation of having to worry about computing. We try and make it invisible and take away the stress and frustration that IT can cause. Innovation is often defined as when good ideas bump into each other. So we're constantly listening to our customers and try to be quite involved in their business and have a, a deep understanding. And through that understanding of what they're trying to achieve and what their strategies are, we can help come up with things that are creative and that fit into that strategy much better. And then that's how innovation plays out for us. Very much about listening and adapting. We won an award from the, we're, uh, we're a finalist of the Business Chamber Awards and we also won the award as being an age-friendly business. And one of the things we were very proud of was when a particular system we designed, which is called the hotel experience, so older people can have discussion forums and understand activities of the day. We involved the older people themselves in the design of the system. So instead of uh, a more traditional IT-based approach, we took a very people-orientated and customer-orientated approach and didn't even actually work so much with the aged care provider themselves. We actually went a step further and worked with the elderly, the older Australians themselves and got their ideas. And, and they were, had a lot of ideas on how the technology would work for them and what appealed to them and what didn't. So that's, that's how we try and bring creativity into our work, by, by genuine engagement with people as to not so much what the system does, but what the system can do for them. I think one of the other big topics that where Microsoft is really coming to the fore is in the area of cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is an enormously important topic to a number of businesses and is rated the top six uh, in the top six issues for small business around Australia. And Microsoft have a long and rich history in, in the security field and our, our technologies are uh, very much aimed at providing a sense of security and a sense of comfort to business owners. So one, one of the main, two main reasons we are a Wollongong based business is one, uh, our owner and our, our staff all enjoy all the wonderful things that, that Wollongong has to offer the lifestyle and, and the proximity to the city and the commercial opportunities that Wollongong offers these days. But also the university is a tremendous source of talent for us. Um, a huge majority of our staff have all studied at Wollongong University and the university provider uh, basically an endless stream of really high quality people that we can uh, encourage into the business. Most of our staff stay very long term, so we can hire good people and they can have a, enjoy a great lifestyle in Wollongong and still work for a medium sized business with, with commercial opportunities and growth opportunities. So Wollongong gives us a little bit of the best of both, but also Wollongong is a hub of innovation and a hub of business growth. And now let's give out some prizes. My favourite part, first up, the winner of Brunch at Dickies is Zoe O'Rourke, who will be shouting her BFF Carly. And Leah Cunningham has won a $100 voucher to Party Golf. Enjoy. Congrats, guys. And that's it. That's our show for this month. If you enjoyed the show, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or maybe sharing it with your friends so that they can enjoy it too. Because sharing is caring. Sure is. If you want to know more about this month's stories, all you have to do is look at the links in the show notes below. In the Loop Wollongong is possible because of the support of our partners, including our media partner, i98FM. Feels good. Our made by possible partners, Wollongong Central, discover the city. The University of Wollongong. How good was I week? Oh, still recovering. Oh my God. Party so hard. <laughs> Advantage Wollongong, a superior business location. Destination Wollongong. Get me on a cruise ship stat. Bring them back here. Stat. Access Law Group, resolution is our solution. Kazen Business and Financial. Lancaster Law and Mediation. Illawarra Mercury. Internetrics. Relativity. This place here with this cool studio. And our promotional partners who you can see here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on In The Loop Wollongong. Bye guys.
And I'm Natasha, and we have got an excellent show. I did stuff that up with Jill again. And or Jane. She also <laughs> liked to swim. She did, she did. I'm just going to... Oh, sorry. It's <laughs> just, you know... <laughs>